Okay, in this section we're going to look at some features of upland glaciation. Um, we're going to try and identify features from the photographs, um, use sketches to and annotations and labels to identify features, and uh, maybe attempt an exam question. The view in the photograph is of uh, Mount Snowdon. Uh, Snowdon is situated here. It is a pyramidal peak, of course. Um, we can also see some of the northern corries. Here we've got Hlyn Glaslin and Hlyn Tlidor. Um, and the trail here is called the Miners Track, which if you went on the geography field trip to Snowdonia, we would have walked down there. Coming off of uh, Mount Snowdon, we can see three distinct arets. There's one here, there's one here, and then one here. It's actually a very nice photograph because you get a real sense of how the area to the north of the peaks, here, all this area here, around here, has actually been gouged out by the action of snow and ice. There is in fact quite a major quarry in this area here too, and behind Snowdon, sort of down here somewhere. Okay. So let's use a sketch just to identify some of the key features of upland glaciation. Um, all I've drawn here using three lines is a pyramidal peak, and the three lines represent the arets coming off the peak, and you can recognise this um, from the from photograph previously for, of Snowdon. The peak itself is formed by um, glaciers gouging away um, the flanks of area of upland. So this area here would all have been dug away as ice moved down and away from the highland into its lower reaches. So as that happens, um, a corry is formed. So what you have in between each of the arets would be a corry system. And many of those corries would also have um, little lakes in the bottom of them called tarns. Okay, in Wales they're sometimes known as flins, or mostly they're known as flins. Okay, and in this part of the picture uh, we've now labelled all the key features. So we have pyramidal peak at the top, um, arets striking down from the peak, um, and then in between the arets we have the quarries, and I've illustrated the tarn in between, inside each, each quarry. And if you're presented with um, a sketch and an examination question um, of glacial features. If it's got a pyramidal peak, so a nice pointy mountain in it, then you can pretty much guarantee that there will be arets coming off the side of it, there will be corries, and there will be possibly tarns in there as well. So it's quite a good way to think about the features of upland glaciation going from the very top, pyramidal peak, down into lower altitude. Okay, here we have a, a, an exam question from a previous GCSE, and you can see that the, the first question is actually asking you to uh, mark a number of physical features of this glaciated landscape. So this question here is looking for you to identify four features. Okay, so if you think about the pyramidal peak, um, you've got one here, you could probably uh, count these as pyramidal peaks. And given that you've got those feature, that feature, um, you can also identify that you've got arets. In this case, you've got arets here, here, and here. You've got a corry and you've got a tarn. So by naming the pyramidal peak, the arets, the quarry and the tarn, you've got your four physical features and therefore you've got your four marks there. What will be good now is to actually have a look at these features, pyramidal peaks and the quarries and arets and so on, um, on an ordnance survey map. So this is a section of the 1 to 25,000 ordnance survey map. Um, the initial photograph that we looked at uh, was looking across to um, Snowdon itself from around here in that direction. Snowdon, you can see, is marked by the red dot and the blue triangle here. Um, the blue triangle represents a spot high, a trigonometrical um, point. You can see the Hlinglaslin, Hlinthlidor, which are the two lakes that we can see in the photograph, and the areas along here were the very steep cliffs which had clearly been gouged away by ice um, during glaciation. And the arets, a little bit more tricky to see, but they run from here, down there, along down here, and then across that way. Um, they are distinguished by having a sort of uh, uh, contours that come to a point, so kind of like this feature all the way down the aret, with the high point of the aret being synonymous with those points. So let's focus a little bit more tightly around the pyramidal peak of Snowdon itself um, and have a look at uh, the key map features that you would need to be able to recognise. 
if you look really carefully, um, you can see that the contours around the pyramidal peak, this area here, actually form, if I just sketch it to the left, a shape something like this. So a sort of triangular shape. Each of the triangle points is basically one of the erects going off to the north, the sort of south uh, west and to the south east. The black markings which you can see on the sort of north and western, north and eastern side of uh, Snowdon around this area here actually denote very very steep ground. It's too steep to, comp to pack in so many contours to show this actual steepness of the ground but this is where the cliffs would be which would represent the back wall, the steep back wall of the quarry. Looking at the quarry itself um, you should be able to trace the lines of contours in a kind of horseshoe shape like so going around the lake and they don't necessarily meet in this area here because this area um, is where the land is dropping away down to lower altitudes. Just a couple other features that are evident on the map. Where you see these areas of little black dots, it tells you that there are scree slopes. Again, they would be likely to be found at the bottom of um, very steep back walls because you have a lot of free soil action dropping material there. Where the contours are very tightly packed, like this area, you know that the ground is going to be very steep. Um, where it's more open, where the contours are more open, the ground is less less steep obviously. Um, this area here, again you can see you've got this curving shape and so this is the back wall, not as steep as over here, but it's the back wall of a quarry as well. Okay, Be a little bit cautious when you encounter features like these dashed lines and these dashed lines here and I think there's a set that go down here as well. These actually are various footpaths and, uh, and, and routeways. Um, and many of the areas of upland glaciation are used extensively for tourism and so there are lots of footpaths marked. So don't mistake them for physical features as such, they're human features. OK, that, that completes this little exercise. Um, remember we've only looked really at sort of four features of upland glaciation, there are more. Um, it's a good idea and I'd recommend that you um, get on to um, the Mount Snowden area um, using uh, Google Earth because uh, you get a really good 3D view of that area and it kind of helps you to understand and, and get a good impression of what the landscape is actually like there. Okay, so recommended piece of work for you.